Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand and gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So today I continue to ask the question I started with last week. What do we need to live a blessed life? Last week we read the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. It is in this passage that we hear Jesus choosing to lift up the poor, the hungry, the meek, those in mourning which includes every one of us at some point or another in our life. Because it's precisely in our moments of disappointment or despair that we are likely to abandon all the things we think we know what it means to be blessed. And we open ourselves to the presence of God that gives without asking in return and blesses us so that we can be a blessing for others. And today I want to focus on this concept of identity. Who is it that we are called to be, and what are we called to do? Now, it's a tricky question, but something that I've been thinking about this past week. I learned in seminary that we are justified by God through grace, that it's not anything that we have to do in order to earn God's love. We should be careful because, because we are blessed, we are able to give to others, and that's part of our responsibility as a Christian, but it's what God does for us what matters. It's this learning that I've come to realize how much of a burden it would be if God judged me on my actions alone. Because it's not up to us. Now, because if we've had a rough week or even a rough couple of months and we're not doing the things that we want or that we should do, does that mean that God's going to love us any less? The answer is no. Which is why it's not up to us. It's up to God. But that doesn't mean that we can sit and be idle. We are called to use our gifts. The gifts that God has blessed us with. Because when we use our gifts to make a difference in the world, there's, there's no better feeling than that. And I think that's something that Jesus is stressing in the gospel reading today. Jesus calls us salt and light. At first, that doesn't really make much sense. What does it mean to be salt and light? Perhaps even the disciples are not sure what Jesus is saying because he doesn't give instructions on how to be salt and light. He tells them that's what they are. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. He doesn't say, get your light out and and sing this little light of mine. He says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others so they can see your good works and then glorify God in heaven. You see, the works that we do, the good works are called and commissioned by God. And to think about that in another way, to be called salt of the earth and light of the world To be called the salt means we are to preserve the world. We're called to let our light shine so that others may see our good works and glorify God. Jesus isn't asking us to earn our salvation. 
but to live out the salvation and discipleship given to us by God as a gift. So I ask you this morning, what is burning inside of you that you want to share with the world? What can you do to benefit the life of this congregation, the community, and the world? You've heard a lot lately how the church needs you to think about your gifts and how you can use them to benefit the life of this congregation. And sometimes we use those time and talents sheets. Other times we just pass around a sign-up sheet and ask you to sign up to do different things. But what if there is another way? You know, to live a blessed life is to, to determine how we are going to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. To be the salt of the world means we're going to preserve things. We will season things. We will take what is already there and we will use our gifts and skills that God has blessed us with to enhance what we believe and what we are called to do. So to think about ministry opportunities here at Faith Lutheran Church. Do you want to participate in music and worship, the youth program, or volunteer for the community dinner? You know, what is already happening in the midst of our congregation that you can preserve, season, or enhance the flavor of? Do you want to sing in the praise band or teach Sunday school or volunteer for Relay for Life? Do you believe that you're being called to some sort of leadership in our congregation? How can you help? How can you be involved? And then the light of the world. What are you doing to inspire others for joyful service? How are you expressing your faith in what you are doing? How are you pointing everything that you do by giving grace and, and thanks to God? You know, since our annual meeting last week, I've had a number of conversations about the ministry of Faith Lutheran Church. I have heard from many in our congregation and I've heard from many in our community who have said that our church is becoming the light of our community. Our church is known as being, showing the presence of God. People who are not really connected with our church are wanting to know more about our ministry because of our community dinner, because of our presence at different community events, because of our openness to hosting the Girl Scouts and Hope's After School Program and the Gardner Emergency Housing Mission. I know that our life together in ministry and the good work we are doing right now is not because of you. It's not because of me. All that we are doing is because of God. It is God who blesses us. It is God who graces us with his presence each and every week when we worship together, when we gather together and plan the life and ministry of this congregation when we gather together for fellowship. All of this leads us to the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And coming to peace in this life starts with blessings from God and then it comes to us. And we can live a life focused on how much we can get about surrounding ourselves with the, the newest and the best of everything. And we can say we want to do good things so we can meet the needs of our budget. Or we can also live a life that God is calling us to. A life of the salt and light. Trying to identify who we are in relation to the church and the world around us. Who we are in relationship to one another. And who we are in God's eyes. In God's eyes, I know that we are blessed and we are beloved children named and claimed in our baptism. From that baptism, we are sent out into the world to discern what God is calling us to and living that out each and every day. And in that calling, in the work that we do, we are the salt of the world and the light of the earth. And we are doing good works to glorify God and to benefit our neighbor. Amen.